Hello and welcome to the Thursday, January 17th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it turns out bad guys need to take breaks too and Brad, who carefully tracks the different mal spam campaigns, has identified that three of them, Emotet, Hankitor and Trickbot, didn't really send out any emails between Christmas and January 15th. So just uh, this week. Now, this week they started up again and continued their regular email campaigns with Word documents. Of course, there's usually a macro in the Word document that will then install, first of all, the Trojan like Emotet and then download additional malware. Doesn't really look like they picked up any new tricks, uh, really just sort of the same old mail spam that we have seen in the past. And talking about same old tricks, uh, this week Rick, who on our team is monitoring Bitcoin addresses of some of these extortion emails, noticed that Bitcoin from various addresses that are associated with these sextortion campaigns were moving into one common Bitcoin account. The total accumulated in that account was a about $22 million worth of Bitcoins. They then spread out again, probably going through some mixer or so before they are cashing out. Now, Trend Micro is reporting another resurgence of MageCard. Uh, MageCard, of course, has made a name for itself by being able to include its malicious JavaScript in various third-party libraries and has led to a number of high-profile compromises. This latest wave is somewhat notable in that it affected a large number of sites. Trend Micro identified 277 different e-commerce sites that were affected by this run of MageCard. MageCard is JavaScript, but by including itself on various websites, it's then able, of course, to exfiltrate data from these websites, and it's in particular targeting checkout pages where users enter credit card data. Turns out this time around, they were able to infect the third-party JavaScript library Adverline. It displays online advertisements and, well, it's created by a French company. And this library then was including also MageCard's code and any site using Adverline was in effect also including the MageCard malicious JavaScript. The tricky part with MageCard has always been that the code is being injected into a third party website like here this advertising company, not in the target website directly, but the target website will then load and include the code from this third party. And that's sort of how MageCard ends up within the e-commerce site. Well, uh, best defense here, be careful what you include in particular on security critical pages like checkout pages. And you may wonder why an e-commerce company would include ads on their checkout pages. Well, it's not necessarily the ads that are being displayed here, but it's also part of the user tracking to see what they actually buy. And in this particular case, this advertiser is then able to later, when the user visits another website, also to show them related ads to something they intended to purchase earlier and you may have seen some of these ads in the past. And Tenable has identified a number of critical vulnerability in Identicard's premises access control system. Premises is software that used to essentially manage key cards and electronic locks in larger buildings. Now, you may have heard about things like, for example, cloning RFID cards and other attacks against uh, door locks like this. But in this case, it's actually the management software that's vulnerable. And by vulnerable, I mean there is a default admin username and password that's hard coded and cannot be changed by the user. So with access to the system, the attacker would then be able to issue themselves credentials in order to access whatever areas of a building are protected by these locks. 
And talking about trivial exploits, ES File Explorer is an Android file manager that has been downloaded about 5.8 million times from Google's Play Store. Problem is it also opens up an HTTP server on a high port without any meaningful authentication. And a hacker able to access this web server is able to list files on the system, also retrieve files from the system and even launch installed applications on the system. Only limitation here is that the attacker has to be within the same network as the victim. So this is nothing that sort of works uh, remotely across the internet. You have to be within the same subnet. The current version is vulnerable. No word as to when an update will be released to fix this problem. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.